We're glad to know you're still there watching Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're talking about what is happening in the National Assembly, where the President, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is seeking the reps' uh, approval of 500 billion naira for palliative uh, after the subsidy removal. We have the principal partner, Wood Regions Court, consulting today in the House uh, in the person of Mr. Shegun Shokbeton. He is here in the capacity of a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shopperton. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, the president has gone to the National Assembly for 500 billion naira for palliatives. Let me just take what you feel about uh, that. Palliatives over fuel subsidy removal. What do you think? Well... Um, it's very interesting, um, this request. I, I'm not ex exactly sure um, what they intend to do, what, what the government, what the president meant by palliatives, uh, because there was no explanation as far as I could find um, with regards to what the exact plans are uh, to provide those palliatives. Let me also um, remind you know, everybody that's viewing that uh, we also have the $800 million um, World Bank loan still pending, right? So if you convert that to Naira at the current exchange rate, that's somewhere around the same $500 million, uh, uh, billion Naira. Uh, comes to probably about $600 billion Naira. Uh, so we're talking about a one3 trillion naira uh, available to the government if this is approved for the provision of palliatives. So it's important to just put that on the table on the one side. Another point that I think is important to note in this request is that it's not a request for fresh funds. It's a request to convert part of the 897 uh, billion supplementary budget that the President Buhari had sent to the National Assembly um, late last year for, um, according to the government at that time, uh, to, to provide infrastructure uh, to cushion the impact of the flooding um, and some security issues that the country faced at that time. Um, so so there, 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 there's a lot to, to unravel you know, with this request. What, if, if that is the case, if what the president is, has done is to request for a conversion, really, of the supplementary budget. In other words, it's trying to change the purpose of part of the 897 billion naira that had been previously approved by the National Assembly. It's trying, to, it's trying to change part of the purpose of that or divert part of that money to provide palliatives. What happens in that case to the original intent of that money? You know, so is it that there was no need at that time, one, how come, even though that money had been approved, as at that time, um, a disbursement obviously hasn't happened? Otherwise, the president wouldn't be asking now for some of that to be converted to, 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 to be used for palliatives, which means that some of that money, that money has not been used for the purpose it was approved for in the first place. Why? You know, so there are a lot of questions to ask with regards to all of this. However, having said all of that, um, 1.3 trillion naira as palliatives cumulatively um, will barely scratch the surface of the impact that the subsidy removal would have on the most vulnerable people in Nigeria and the people that that subsidy was helping to be an act active players in the Nigerian economy. You know, so. Um, I think it's important for us to ask questions with regards to what exactly uh, these funds will be deployed to and how quickly that deployment will happen, how quickly these funds will impact um, the, the, the spending or purchasing power of the average Nigerian such that you can then say that it would have the desired um, effect on overall economic well-being of the country. 
Uh, well, another question you didn't ask uh, from what you were asking when it will be given and all that is how often will this be given? Because I was looking at, uh, I made some kind of calculation. Um, if, when you say 500 billion naira, divide that by 120 million people. I'm not removing anybody in Nigeria and saying you are the rich person, it shouldn't come to you and all that. I'm talking about Nigeria as a whole. 120 million people dividing uh, five, 500 billion naira would be like only 4,000 uh, 4, something, 4,666 naira or so uh, that everybody will get. So how often will this be given to, for it to be called a palliative? Because if I, I'm given 4,666 naira as I'm sitting here, it wouldn't take me to work for two days. So how often will this be given? Is, it, is, this, is the palliative for four years? Is it for one year? Will they be giving it every month? And if they're giving it every month, what's the difference between that money they'll be spending and the fuel um, subsidy money that they were spending or that they could have been spending now that they know the data of the fuel that we consume. Let's say we were spending like 500, that 500 billion per month in fuel subsidy. And now we know that because we were only financing or getting this fuel for other countries as well, we now have a good data about the, the fuel that we are consuming in Nigeria. That means maybe we can be spending like 100 billion instead of 500 billion anymore. So what will that what difference will that bring to us? How often will they be giving us this palliative and all that? And having asked that, because you are not in government, you cannot answer that. Let me ask you personally, are you even comfortable knowing the antecedents of governments, successive governments about palliative? At least the, the nearest one, the, the most recent one is the COVID-19 palliative. With all that experience, are you even comfortable with the word palliative making the life of Nigerians better? Well, okay, so taking everything that you said into context, I think it's also important to note that the government had, when the $800 million World Bank loan came into the public conversation, right, into the public space, the government had said that this was going to be used for conditional cash transfers. So you are not far off the mark if you assume that now that the president is talking of the $500 billion palliative approval, that he is speaking about conditional cash transfers as well. But it's important to know that he didn't say so. Mm. Um, the, the, the purpose has not been declared. To take that analysis for that, what the analysis you just gave now, look, if you were, and I said this at that time, 800 million US dollars into Naira, even at today's rate, would come to around 600 uh, billion uh, Naira. If you divide that amongst of the vulnerable, or even if you limit that to, according to the government, the 50 million uh, most vulnerable in their uh, 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 most vulnerable household register, um, you will still arrive at a figure that will be um, very small compared to the issues that those houses or those individuals are facing. Mm. And it would only be useful for just one month. So if you assume that you are given 500 billion naira um, as palliatives and you're going to use that for conditional cash transfers, it would only suffice for one month at best two. So what then happens subsequent months? If these funds are deployed to conditional cash transfers, they would not even scratch the surface of the impact that this would have on these same people that we're trying to provide palliatives for. Now, since the government did not talk about conditional cash transfers, they just said palliatives. There are so many other ways that palliatives can be provided. The challenge that I've had and, you know, the, 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 the contradiction of the entire palliative conversation is twofold. One, the funds, the amount of money you would require to provide just one type of palliative, as we've, as we've just analyzed now, if, if you talk about conditional cash transfers, this money just barely scratches the surface. If you talk about pro using... Um, Providing palliatives, for example, um, in the in the in the area of transportation, which is which is one of the areas where the impact of the subsidy removal will be most felt in the immediate. So let's assume that you want to use these funds entirely to provide buses that would maybe 
um, transport people either at a highly subsidized rate or for free, you will only be able to provide about three buses per ward in the entire country with 600, with 500 billion naira. I've done the numbers. About three buses per ward, that will do absolutely nothing. Even if you are talking about large luxury buses that can, that can transport 100 people per trip, it, 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 it doesn't scratch the surface. The kind of money that you require, and this is the contradiction, the kind of money that you require to provide palliatives that would impact the people um, will be multiples of the subsidy itself. For, for, this, for the palliatives to work, you'll be spending trillions of naira over a sustained period of time to acquire buses, for example, using the public procurement guidelines, will take you nothing less than nine months. What happens in the intervening period? You know, if you decide that you are going to apply the subsidies um, to, to providing healthcare services or to improving education, it will take you years for that money to trickle down to the people. And the 500 billion obviously can do nothing with regards to any one of those things, whether it's transportation, whether it's healthcare. So the palliative conversation is, is, a, is a red herring. It's, it's a waste of time. You cannot provide palliatives to replace subsidies. In fact, let me put it this way. The only palliative that Nigerians need today regarding subsidy removal is the return of the subsidy itself. Mm. That's the only palliative that can work. Mm. The only way to cushion the effect of subsidy removal is to, is to put the subsidies back in place. And, and this is the conversation that we must continue to have. Look, subsidy removal is hurting, is going to hurt the economy in a fundamental way that we are simply refusing to acknowledge as, as private sector people, as opinion leaders, as people that understand the way economies work. The subsidies in themselves are supposed to provide a cushioning effect that will put the most vulnerable sectors of society into the economic cycle, that it would ensure that they are a part of the consumption base of the country, such that based on their consumption, investment in production can then follow, and then economic activity and economic growth would happen. You take those subsidies out, you kill off the, the, the economic value of your large population, and therefore you, you constrain the capacity of your economy to grow at the rate that we need to be growing at. People must recognize this and stop talking about the damage the subsidies are doing from the fiscal budgeting side. That is only one side of the equation. And it's, in my opinion, the least impactful side of the, of the equation. Um, Six trillion naira in subsidies per annum comes to about 30% of your entire budget uh, volume. So it sounds bad. But there are other things that we need to talk about. For example, the size of that budget itself. Why are government revenues only trending in the region of 10 to 12 trillion naira per year? We know that Nigeria has the capacity to generate far more than that in multiples if loopholes and, and leakages are plugged. Those are the conditions we need to have, not the removal of the subsidy. You take that subsidy away, yes, you save some money in terms of the budget, but the application of that money, in the first instance, you can't even guarantee it, and then the impact of that application in terms of driving economic growth will take a, an, an, a, a ridiculously long time to happen. Subsidy removal is not the answer. And I think it's important for the president and the government to recognize this. The answer to our fiscal problems is fixing leakages in our revenue profile, is fixing wastage in the government. But, but they will argue so, that, it will be argued that uh, that is part of fixing of the leakages because money was going to things that maybe were not really as they were projected to be. So that is plugging that uh, leakages uh, the, the rules, yeah. But so, if that argument comes up, what do you say? I agree. And but the question is, what quantum of the subsidy um, figure, the monthly or annual subsidy figure, is going into real subsidies? Is actually impacting the lives of the plan. What quantum of that is going into people's pockets because they are phantom subsidies? 
That is the task that government must be bold enough to take on and deal with. So we all know that there is a good chunk of the subsidy figure that is just, it's, it's corruption. Mm -hmm. People are simply eating that money in quotes <laughs> to use our local balance, yeah. right? So what quantum of that represents graft? Fix it. Stop it. And you, you, don't, you don't decapitate because you have headache now. It's a Yoruba proverb. Eh? You don't decapitate your head because you have headache. You take Panadol or some other whatever you know, analgesic you want to use. So what, we need, what the government has done is to decapitate itself, is to decapitate this specific intervention rather than finding out the element of it that is dreaming with corruption and taking it out of the way. Right? So for me, the argument that subsidy removal is a plug-in of one of those leakages is not a complete argument. It's only a part of the subsidy that is a leakage, and you should fix that part, not take the subsidies away entirely. And before I, you know, before I stop on that point, uh, Yambul, it's important to note, and like I've been saying, and I, and I think I've seen a number of other public commentators say this repeatedly, it's important to note that even the most, the biggest capitalist nations in the world, for example, the United States, for example, the United Kingdom, the EU, excuse me, sir, every single one of these countries have subsidies in various areas of their economy. It's not even just energy or, or petroleum. They subsidize food, they subsidize production, they subsidize health, healthcare, right? So the argument of taking subsidies away simply fly in the face of reason and logic. This is not the answer, it's not the solution. The solution is to fix graft, is to fix the leakages, and is to reduce the cost of governance. That is the conversation we must continue to push into the public domain until it sinks in. I know that people um, have been told these things for so long that they've come to accept it as a fait accompli, but it's not true. So we need to continue to repeat these things again until we reprogram our minds to recognize that the subsidy is not the problem. The problem is graft. The problem is wastage. So let's fix the draft part of the subsidy and leave the subsidy, the, the rest of the subsidy, to, to do the job that subsidies do all over the world, which is mm. to boost consumption. Okay, uh, well, um, this is where we will have to cut this uh, today. When we were talking about buses, and I was just Im imagining if the buses come to the wards, let's say two buses per ward, uh, who is going to be fueling these buses? If it is still the government that will fuel the buses, then what is the difference? And then I was just thinking, what is the definition of misappropriation? You budget money for a particular thing, and then you want to use it for another thing, no matter how important that thing may be, that is what the definition of misappropriation is. People have suffered during the flood. People are suffering because of insecurity. And you want to take that and you do palliative that we do not even know what it's going to take, what shape it's going to take. And is that not misappropriation or do you waive that word because it's the president that is doing it? Well, there are questions that we need to answer. Like you have said, the solution may not be the removal of fuel subsidy, but looking inward to see how graft could be curbed and every other thing that is making us spend unnecessarily, like uh, the cost of governance as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Shokwetson, for coming on the show this morning. Always a pleasure. Have a nice day. You too. We've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokwetson, a principal partner, Wood Region Scott Consulting. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll treat another topic. But we will be looking at the weather now to see what is happening. Stay with us. <laughs> 